ain't Drumline and I ain't Nick Cannon. I'm Michael Botcher and you're watching The Garage here on WAI.com and this is Cure for the Radio. They're about to rip your face off with Dance Rock. Let's do this. <laughs> That was Cure for the Radio, and they just ripped your face off with dance rock, and I got their singer-guitar player, Kyle, right here. Thanks for coming on the show, brother. I really appreciate y'all coming on. It's a pleasure. And uh, introduce us to the band. Okay, well, this is my brother. He actually does all the percussion, lyrics, and vocals. And then over here, we have Ted, who do percussion as well, but he also does keys, synthesizers, all that good stuff. Then we have Kevin over here. He plays bass, does all that good stuff as well. But then we have over here Trevor, our brand new guitar player. Tell me how the band started. 
Um, well, me and my brother were playing in different bands around town back when we used to live in San Antonio. And then we got disconnected for about a year or so because my family moved up there. And so then eventually he moved back up there and then we just started playing. I generally work over at the Corova. I'll bar in, bar back, and I'll do some shows here and there, usually promotion. But luckily I'll be working with my boss, Angel, and we'll pretty much go through Live Nation, working for like Coheed and Cambria, Circus Survive, Iron Maiden, good stuff like that. It's really just street promotion stuff and it really helps out with the band because it teaches us that's exactly what we need to do for our shows and everything. We here in the garage love the Corova. We spent some time at the Big Spill. Um, did y'all play that? Yeah, we actually did. We played with Motion City Soundtrack, um, Crystal Antlers, a lot of really great bands. Y'all got this dancey thing, but heavy guitars. Talk about your sound. Um, generally, when it came down to the sound, uh, me and my brother, we've always collaborated throughout the years. We always like to take bits and pieces from our inspirations and kind of just put it together as far as collaborating. Then we just pretty much bring everything to all these guys and then they'll throw in their two cents because we all listen about the same type of music. I like to have like a poppy kind of feel, but also make sure the music still sounds deep and poetic and genuine. You know, we're not coming from some fake place, basically. I mean, lyrically, we try to be somewhat serious. Of course, not too serious. Um, like I said, we we like to be more poetic about it. Everyone else likes to just sing about girls and heartbreak and stuff. And we try to get a little political. We try to take things from our own personal life and incorporate it into the music. Yeah, girls suck. I'm into, like, teddy bears. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I love girls. Anyways, uh, so uh, let's talk about the first um, song you had. What was it called? It's called Teenage Grenade. Um, we kind of sat down and we were trying to experiment through different sounds. And we were like, well, let's get a little dancey here. Let's do this a little here. And as we went through, we were like, oh, well, this kind of sounds like this for an inspiration. But let's kind of, you know, not go too far and dabble into there. Let's see what else we can do with it. And we just kind of came up with it more dancey. Then it became melodic, but always stayed upbeat. So one thing that we saw here was the two drums, three drums thing. What, what was the name of that song and why did y'all do that? Uh, that one's called I'm Not Me and we're all uh, pretty much with percussive background. I only started playing drums because this guy right here, he's always my favorite drummer. And then Ted over here, he's also a drummer as well, which is great because the new guitarist, Trevor, he also does drumming and teaches drumming you know, on the wow. side. So we're going to get him on there pretty soon, too. Hold, hold on. Come over here, dude. Um, where's that drum? Go get that. You're going to teach me how to play drums right now, because I'm pretty terrible. All right, so. Um, you're going to learn right here. You're going to learn match grip. OK. Match grip right here is called German grip right here. You flip it over. I've heard of the Roman handshake. <laughs> it's Make sure this fulcrum right here stays stable. You want to have a nice tight thing where you can pull it out, but it's, not really. It's loosely. like an Olympic sport. So right, what you're doing right now is actually called French grip. When you hold it like this, it's more for timpanis. Let's go ahead and turn it this way. Wow. And go ahead and go up and down like this. Try to use more wrist. There it's, you all, go. it's on the wrist. I feel like we're in the Olympics right now. I just learned to play drums on the garage, thanks to Cure for the Radio. So, um, you know, when you're doing your live shows and you're busting out your dancey thing, um, <laughs> uh, do you all um, have crowd participation or what's the crowd get out of that? Oh, yeah. I mean, generally our favorite shows are house shows. We'll usually go off to Evergreen House or something like that. And that's especially when all the crowd gets into it. Younger crowds especially, they like to dance. People our age, they're like, oh, we're too pretentious. We've heard this before. We don't want to get into or it. Or sometimes maybe they've had too much to drink and they <laughs> can't. Uh... That's when you should want to dance. <laughs> right, hold this, mm -hmm. because I, I think this is what may happen at one of those shows. Just close, start coming out. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Exactly. These guys are PG-13, not really. But seriously, um, dude, those are some cool tattoos. Uh, this is actually a piece of artwork. A lot of people don't really know what it really is. It's kind of hard to see. It's just a home tattoo my friend did. It's a guy pulling the guy out of the water, saving his life. Had to do with my friend's suicide and me talking him out of it. Wow. So, yeah. Do, do you ever write songs about these guys over here? Uh, well, our family especially. Actually, the new city that we just finished up pretty much has to do a lot with missing our hometown. We're from Florida, so we miss the beach and everything. We're really used to that, and everything's really dry and not as wet as it is over there. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, what's um, up with y'all's records and shows? What do y'all got coming up? Uh, pretty much uh, August 17th is going to be our next show. It's going to be The Basement of the Corova. We're going to be doing it with uh, Cue the Credits. We're going to be doing it with uh, Room 635. There's going to be You and I Underwater. 
um, the aesthetic interiors. We're gonna have a lot of great bands onto that one. Pretty much, we're gonna be giving out free pizza uh, for like an hour or so. Then we're gonna be giving uh, the first five people get in free, all that good stuff. Pretty much, we're gonna have great sp drink specials that night. And as far as the CD, uh, we just finished it. It's a five song EP. You can go on of our Facebook, anything like that. You can go on Bandcamp and you can download it all. Help us out. You can listen to it for free, but you know, <laughs> five dollars would really help us out. Okay. Now, real quickly, uh, I'm gonna ask everyone, what is the number one reason why someone should go to your show on the 17th? On the 17th, uh, we got lots of energy, lots of excitement. We're not a like, we're not a boring band. We don't play background music. We kind of demand your attention, you know. And uh, I'd like to think our music makes you think. We're gonna rip your face off. Yes. 